Hello and welcome to another Kevis tutorial. Today I want to talk about embedding a patch into HTML or how, how does the HTML look like of an exported patch and we want to interact with the patch from outside of the patch from the HTML. So this is something we want to build. So we have this little action button and when I click it we will change the scale of this circle um, from the outside of the patch. Okay, let's just start. I will create a new patch on KevisGL. I will create my little very simple setup here. I will create a main loop. I will create a circle operator and a transform. And I want uh, to show or to see that the patch is doing something or it's animated all the time. So I would just add a little timer here uh, so that the circle is rotating. And we have some motion so we know the patch is running. Okay, so for the interaction with the website, um, we want to interact and change the scale of the circle. So I will just use the number up to just expose this scale number and I can enter now I can enter the scale in this number op. So this will be basically my default value for uh, for later. So every time we open the patch, the circle will have this size. So we change the number. I want this to be animated. So I will add a smooth op. So we have a smooth animation. Um, so I can plug this in here. And now when I change the number of the scale, you will see it's uh, smoothly animated. Great. So later when we export the patch, we want to change this number uh, from outside. So the easiest way to do this is using variables. And uh, to create a variable, I can just click onto the cable in the middle and I don't need to type anything. On the right, there's always those suggestions. And there's, for example, a uh, suggestion for variables. So it says replace link with a new variable. So let's click this. And we need to give it a name, so we would just call it scale. And then the cable that was here is replaced with two operators, a set and a get bar operator. So now when I change the scale, you would see it will work like before. And uh, if you look here, uh, while I change the values, you see there's now activity on those uh, cables because we changed the variable. So there's like a uh, transparent cable in between them. So if you use variables a lot, um, I would also look into uh, the other ops for variables. So for example, there's a trigger number, trigger var number operator. So this helps you um, setting variables by triggering them. And this way you have way more control when the number or when the variable is set. Um, so keep that in mind. If you have multiple setters, Better use the trigger var trigger number up. It's more, it's really easier to debug and easier to control. But for our little setup, we only need one. So this is totally fine and great. So let's export this. I will just uh, click on export in the menu and we just choose the standard uh, option download HTML and we get to download a little zip file. So I will uh, uncompress this file. Here we go. Um, so this is our export. So the export um, consists of static files. So those files I can just put on my web server. So if you rent a web space or on, on a web server, you can just upload them using a FTP program or something like an SSH program or something. You can just upload them there. And then you can open them on your domain on your browser. So that's the easiest way to, to put this on the internet. But in this um, tutorial, we will use a local web server. And um, I will use a little call that's called uh, HTTP server. It's a little NPM module. So let's do this. So I want to change to this directory. Um, so here are our files and I will just 
execute this using npx so this is a part of npm so you for this to do you have the to, to in, have installed the node and npm setup but it's really doesn't matter what server you what server you uh, use so this is called npx HTTP server so when I enter this um, uh, HTTP server sorry uh, then it will just run this server. So now on my machine locally, it serves those files in this directory. So I can now take this URL. So then we see our patch running in the browser on this URL. And one little tip, if you ever see something not working or something is not updating, uh, try the dev tools. The dev tools are really like, they are really worth to learn. So. Um, I opened the dev tools and you can go to the network tab up here and check this little button disable cache. So this way, when we reload the page or something, you will always get like the newest version. There's nothing cached done. So this is really handy if you do not see like the latest version or something. You can also click shift reload, I think, um, but this is really handy. And the dev tools, so on macOS, it's command. Uh, option I that opens it. I think on Windows it's Control Shift I or something like this. I don't know. You have to up, uh, look it up for your operating system, but they are really handy. You can also see um, a lot of information here. In the beginning, it looks really scary, but it really helps you identify uh, problems and disable cache and all this kind of stuff. Okay, let, we we will just keep that open, um, but I think we can ignore it. Okay. So we have our little uh, circle running in our browser. So let's have a look at our index.html file. So I will open this in my editor. You can use any editor you want. And let's have a quick look at this file, right? So this is a HTML file. So there's a, a head area. So this contains style sheets, for example, then some meta information, which is not really interesting to us. Then comes the body, so the, the HTML itself. So this contains a canvas element. So the canvas is basically what cables renders to. So this is like an image element, but uh, JavaScript can render stuff onto it. So this is our main output. Then we have two script tags. So the first one just loads everything that cables needs to uh, run. So this is a JavaScript and it contains the patch and the JavaScript to run the patch. And then we have a little bit of more code. So this is um, mainly uh, some callbacks. We will uh, come to that later. And then there's this block here. So this is how to start, like how cable starts, or like how the cables patch is basically started. So uh, we have some parameters here. So for our result, we don't want to change the size of the patch all the time. So when I resize this, you see the patch is getting bigger or smaller. So we don't want that. We want a HTML page where the canvas is in there, like, like an image element or something. So for this, we need to change this parameter here, GL canvas resize to window. So then it will no longer resize the patch automatically to the window. So we will set this to false and then go up and change, uh, remove the width and height parameters of the canvas here and then we can we want to style our canvas using css so i will scroll up to this uh, css area here and there we have a canvas um, tag so uh, can for, for all canvas elements in the html those css rules are applied so we want to we want to change this a bit so we want to remove position absolute and outline and we will uh, just set uh, with uh, by hand like 640 pixel and the height uh, to three, uh, 360 pixels and maybe we will add a border three uh, pixel red and I just saved the file and now I can reload this and then we see we now have a fixed size for this canvas element and uh, we have a lot of empty space. Um, so another thing 
the the body style here this overflow hidden this means there will never be uh, scroll bars shown so we want to remove this and the height uh, force it to 100% we will want to remove this also the margin and the background color and when I save it now you will see we have a white background we have a little bit of margin so this is uh, so those values are basically most of the time you want the cabbage patch to just run in maximum size, right? So that's that's the default setting. So to change this, you just have to remove them. And um, yeah, so now we have basically uh, we can add more HTML to this to this page. So for example, so I go back to the body, so where the the content of the page is. And I will, for example, add a um, H1. Uh, this is a headline. Uh, and I will just set the headline to testing and reload the patch. And then you see there's a, the headline. And I will add some text here, add a word or whatever, and a break. And um, put this in a few times and then reload it and then you see we have just normal html and in between is our canvas and and there's just uh, normal text in here and um so this is basically you can just design your whole website around it or you can have like a existing website and put uh, the um the javascript code in there for your patch you could also just keep it like the full resize and run it in an iframe but in an iframe uh, outside from an iframe you don't have this uh, possibilities that we want to explore now um yeah so let's add uh, another element um i want to add a button so i will add a button uh, I don't know, call it action. So now we have this, this button element on our page. So um, this could be clicked. Um, so we want, when we click this, we want to change the variable that changes the style of our circle basically, right? So um, to do that, we need to add a listener to this button so that we can execute code when it's pressed so to do this i will give it an id so let's call it my button and with this id we can add uh, a function to it that is executed when this button is clicked so to do this we have to write a little bit of javascript code so you saw those empty functions here so when you read the comments uh, it's telling you you can now access the patch register variables watchers and so on so this is basically where we want to execute our code because when this function is called it's called patch initialized everything is ready everything is done and loading and the patch is being displayed so this is the moment in time where we want to add our own code so um, in theory, so the browser loads everything asynchronously. So the, the JavaScript file is loaded in parallel with all the images or whatever you have on your page. So you can also see this if you go to the network tab again and next to this application, there's this throttling thing. So when I change this to 3G, for example, so the browser will simulate a really slow access. And then when I reload it, you will see that the HTML and the CSS is already there and the patch is still being loaded and now it's still loading. And if we try to access the patch, it will give you an error. So we have to wait until the patch is loaded and 3G is really slow. So let's change it to fast 4G and then, then it appears, right? So, and this is the moment where this callback is executed and we want to use that. So I will set this to no throttling, but this is really helpful to simulate a slow internet connection and you can try out your website with this and it's really helpful okay so now we use the patch initialized um, callback here so and to add a uh, uh, javascript uh, to the button when it's clicked we have to use 
we have to get the element. So we use, uh, so this is like the most vanilla JavaScript way to do it. If you use uh, a framework, it could be done completely different probably, but I would just use this because you don't need anything for it. So we need, uh, we use a document get element by ID and then we gave it the ID my button. So then we use my button. Uh, I will do, not do any error checks. I will just try this uh, without errors, but later you maybe should check if this element exists or something like this. Um, but yeah, so we will add an event listener uh, and the event we want to listen to is click, the click event. And when that happens, we want to execute this uh, function. So let's just output to the console, uh, click. So this way we reload this and now we click the button and then we see Every time we click the button, uh, it outputs click to the console. So the console down here, you can also go to this console, which we'll just show basically the output uh, uh, of, the, of the JavaScript. If you output something to the console, it will be shown here. So this is also really um, handy to debug. So now I know, okay, we have this click listener and we can execute something. Okay, so now we want to change our variable. So uh, to do this, we have, have a look at the cables documentation. So you can go to cables docs and there you have this little uh, menu and there's uh, this section about exporting and embedding. And this section has a page called using variables. So let's go there. And there you can read how to modify the variables and everything. The most important thing is for us is this setting variables from outside cables. And there's this little snippet that is basically everything we want to do. So it is cables patch set variable. That's the function we want to call. So let's go back to our patch and to our code. And there where we where I added console log, I want to um, insert this little snippet. So cables patch set variable. And this is the variable name. So this is wrong for us. So I will just change this to scale. And uh, we want a numeric value. So I will set this to two for now. Then I will save this and uh, reload the patch. So now when I click the action button, it grew a little bit. So let's make it a bit bigger. Reload. Now when I click it, it will grow to four. So when I click it again, nothing is happening. We still see the click, but the, the number is not changing. So maybe let's try to make it a bit more interesting. So we can just scale it to a random number by using math random function and multiply this by four as that uh, <clears throat> then this will give me a random number between zero and four. So now when I reload it and press the action button, you see every time it's changing the scale of the circle to a random number. And this is basically how you modify values from outside of cables. And you can also read those, read other variables back and use them in your, in your JavaScript part and lots of more stuff. So use the uh, documentation. There's a callback when a variable changes, then you can do stuff. Um, you can use this for a lot of stuff. You can also use strings, for example, or like a JSON object, for example. Maybe all the text on this website comes from inside cables, or it will send text to the patch that the patch can show text in the correct language, something like this. There's a lot what you can do with variables. Um, but yeah, so this is our simple example. Let me know. Um, if you have any questions or any remarks, or if you want to see more stuff uh, you know, from this area. Um, yes, thank you very much. Bye.